Does your Windows 10 based computer take forever to load up? Does it seem like it just takes absolute ages to launch a program? If so, this video is for you. I'm going to walk you through my seven favorite tips of absolutely doing everything that I know to get things working at their very best possible, possible level. And six of them are all software tweaks that we can make within Windows clicking this and clicking that and making a few changes. And then there is a suggestion of a little piece of hardware that tends to be an amazing upgrade for most people if you're working on an older computer. So watch this video right to the end and you're gonna see all of my best suggestions. All right, so as you can see for tip number one, you see my mouse highlighted there. I'm gonna right click here on the start menu and we're gonna disable the startup programs. And you see where it says task manager i'm going to go ahead and left click on the task manager i'm going to bring up this little box the task manager and there's one two three four five six seven tabs at the top you're going to go ahead and click on the fourth tab over called startup and as you can see i'm going to maximize this on my computer i actually haven't looked at mine in a little bit and it's not a huge problem for me with my system but i do see the status of multiple things to be disabled or enabled, disabled or enabled. And the ones that are enabled are the programs that are gonna launch when Windows is launching. So you really wanna go ahead and disable as many of those programs as possible. You don't need to launch when your computer launches. So for example, my iTunes helper, I don't really need that. It says it's enabled. I'm gonna go ahead and right click on that and I'm gonna click on disable. And that's really as simple as it is. And all the ones that are enabled that you don't think need to be running when you start your computer, you go ahead, disable them, and that should be that should be minimizing the amount of programs that Windows has to launch when your computer starts up so that when you need to use your machine, it's ready to go as fast as possible. Awesome. So the second tip that I'm going to offer is to run a program that's already built into Windows. It's called Check Disk or CHKDS. Okay. And to find that, what you need to do is click on the little search icon in the bottom left corner of your screen. It's going to bring up your search bar, and I'm going to type in here CMD. And before you go ahead and click enter or click run, on the right hand side, you see where it says run as administrator. It's important that you go ahead and do that so that we have full access to run the command. So I'm going to go ahead and run as administrator. And yes, I'm going to agree to the Windows command prompt. And what it's going to bring up here is the command prompt, which is what the CMD stands for. Go ahead, type in CHKDSK, and I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And what it's going to do is it's going to scan the file system of your computer. It's going to look for any errors or bad sectors on the disk, the hard disk or your SSD that could be interrupting in the smooth operation or file movement and processing that needs to happen when your computer is running so i'm going to skip it ahead here a little bit all right so as you can see that total thing took just about a minute it causes absolutely no harm It's built right into the windows system and you can see there that i did have zero kilobytes in bad sectors which is a good thing and always a good practice to work on a windows machine let's hit up tip number three all right so tip number three we're going to optimize the drives on our system go ahead click on your start menu left click on that start menu and we're going to click then on the settings button here and from settings we want to go into the system tab which is the first top left and on the left hand side of the system you're going to see where it says storage go ahead and click on storage and then I'm going to scroll down with my mouse wheel a little bit here to where it says optimize drives go ahead go into optimize drives and it's going to bring up this window right here and all I do is I click on the optimize button. And as you can see right here, it's going to click and run through and you can just highlight each drive that you have in your system and you can have them optimized. So it's going to depend on your use patterns, whether or not this is going to make a major impact. But this has always been something. This is also known as defragmenting that people have done for a long time with Windows. But it's a good routine practice to include as part of the total picture of speeding up the system. All right, tip number four is basically to update every driver in your system, especially your graphics card drivers. I've definitely had problems with this being a gamer. I like to go and open up. So if you've got an NVIDIA GeForce based system or NVIDIA based graphics card is what I mean, you're going to want to open up your GeForce experience. I'm opening that up from my lower task menu here, uh, but you could also open it up by searching for it or bringing it up in the start menu. And I'm literally just going to go where it says here for drivers and I'm going to check for updates. 
course, right now, I do happen to be up to date with my graphics card drivers. You have the latest GeForce game ready driver. But if you have an AMD based graphics card, then you're going to want to open up that utility program and update via that route. Tip number five, and make sure you are updating Windows. Click on the start menu and click on settings. Obviously, you're going to want to go where it says here to update and security. And once you're in here, there's two things to always make sure that you do. First is you're going to want to click on check for updates. It really doesn't usually take a ton of time unless, of course, you haven't done this in a long time. This process on a really old machine could take like a day. You know, it's it's definitely something that I recommend trying to stay up to date with. And as you can see there, I just installed a brand new virus definition update and it literally took me just a couple of seconds. The other thing to be aware of here is to click on view optional updates. Now, there's a little driver update I can click on here with a little drop down menu and as you can see there's a printer driver and creative media now I don't honestly even know I believe the creative media is for my sound card and obviously the printer one is for my printer it is important that you especially focus on the Microsoft updates as far as each of the hardware devices it is not wrong to go ahead and go to their web pages and to download those updates manually. But I have often just used Windows Update here to keep the system up and fresh so that all your devices are working optimally and everything is working as smoothly as possible. So tip number six is a little bit more involved than the others, but it's definitely something that can help you when you've tried everything else. Go ahead and click on your start menu once again, and you're gonna to wanna to click on settings. And now from here, we're gonna go back into the update and security section. But once we're there, what we're going to do this time is you're actually going to click on where it says recovery. Now, under recovery, you have to go to where it says get started and you're basically going to reset your PC. And what I would recommend for almost all situations, unless you're certain of what you're doing, is you're going to click on the keep my files option. And what that's going to do is it's basically going to reinstall Windows and it's going to keep your programs you know or mainly like your pictures and your files all where they are and it's just going to update the windows files this is something that can be really really helpful to you know kind of like fix problems that you just can't quite uh maybe your printer is not working or maybe you're having some other kind of glitchy behavior which isn't common these days uh, but definitely something to be aware of i'm not reinstalling mine exactly the second but it is absolutely something that i recommend you do if it's been a long time all right, and also just make sure that unless you have the USB drive or the you know DVD or CD-ROM that you can reinstall Windows from, you're gonna to wanna to use this cloud download feature. And that's essentially saying that it's gonna download Windows from the Microsoft servers so that it can update it. And I'm gonna just click on next here. We're just gonna go through the menus just to kind of give you an idea of the choices that I would make for each of the questions that it's asking and it's showing you right here what it's going to do resetting will change settings back to their defaults it'll keep your personal files it'll download and reinstall windows and remove all apps and programs so that's something to be very aware of that you might want to just make a little list or take an inventory of which programs you have in your system so that you can you know easily recover and re-download fresh fully up-to-date copies of them. And we're just going to click here where it says view apps that we, we will be removed. And this is showing that it's going to remove a whole bunch of everything. And this is a great way to clean up a computer that, you know, you've had for a long time, or maybe, you know, you, you know, you're going to give it to your kids, or you're going to give it to somebody else. And like it says here, this will take a while, your PC will restart, and it's going to use a fair bit of data downloading. So if you have to pay per gigabyte, just be aware that, you know, downloading Windows is a fairly large. It says 3.51 gigabytes of data. But all in all, this is an excellent step to take. Click reset there when you're ready. And you're going to have an excellent refreshed copy of Windows ready for you to go. So tip number seven is once you've gone through and you've tweaked the software and you've done as many modifications to the setup of your system as possible, then you're going to want to go ahead and consider replacing especially an old hard drive with an SSD or a solid state drive. The, the, the amount of difference in speed from a hard drive to an SSD is quite astounding. And I do think it would breathe life, especially into older laptops, um, but even in a desktop system as well. And as you can see here on the screen, these small wafer type 
um, chips are basically uh, SSDs. They're called NVMe M.2 SSDs, and they are really like the cream of the crop, very, very efficient. I use a couple of them in my system, um, but I also use a couple of large capacity hard drives, you know, just for kind of long-term storage of movies and music and things like that. And then the ones that you see down on the lower section here, the sort of the smaller rectangle, this is the traditional SSD. And of course, they will depend on the motherboard that you have or the kind of laptop upgrade that you have, the capacity that you have in your system. So this is something, I'm gonna leave a couple of links down in the description of the SSDs that I use and that I recommend. Um, if you want to go go here to this Amazon site and check it out, you could also look at other um, you know other computer manufacturers. I've always ordered these from Amazon. The prices always seem to be really good, so um, that's what I recommend. But you know, any way that you can get your hands on it is absolutely going to be the type of upgrade is going to absolutely keep your system running for quite a few more years. So this is something I highly recommend. All right, and the bonus tip if you ask me, is to upgrade the RAM in your system. The RAM is basically like the short-term operating space that your computer needs to function. And some of the older laptops or you know desktop models you have could have only four or eight gigabytes of RAM. And yes, that is typically enough for you know smaller use case situations, but with the increasing uses that people put on their machines, especially with video and picture editing, you know, video conferencing and running multiple programs at once on your computer, that RAM space can get eaten up so quickly. So take a look at your specific computer, try to learn and understand how you can increase the RAM. On a laptop, those are the two things you can really usually upgrade is the, the hard drive to an SSD or the SSD to a bigger SSD. And you can usually swap out or add some new RAM chips as well to give it that little extra life and to keep it running at a top speed. Absolutely something I recommend. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to MW Tech Zone and let me know what you want to see from me in the future. I love this stuff and I love you too. Thank you so much for watching.